with over 700 general items in the game of Minecraft and more being added every version. How many of these can you actually farm in survival? And of those, how many can you farm automatically? And of those, which few can be farmed infinitely automatic? Hello there, Ray here, and welcome to my 10 year obsession over trying to farm up every item in the game of Minecraft. After making thousands of farms and making videos about hundreds of them, I want to take on an impossible challenge, designing a farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft. Let's see where the true limitations lie for automation in Minecraft. So today's challenge is to see if we can make an automatic gas farm. If you guys have seen my snapshot review video, I noticed that there was excessive amount of gas spawning here in the Soul Sand Valley. You also got like the Enderman and Skeleton spawning here, but there's just a ton of gas that end up spawning here. It's quite a high percentage. So let's head on over into our testing server. And let's see if we can complete the challenge of making a ghast only farm. So we're here in the Soul Sand Valley and we did some prior testing in this biome and it produces a lot of gas. It also can produce Enderman as well as Skeletons. Um, Enderman are Normally quite rare to spawn in the nether, but they spawn relatively high in this biome. And skeletons are another thing that can spawn here. Let's see if we can get some skeletons. There they are. So between the three mobs, only one of them is resistance to fire, and that's the gas. Enderman, while the skeletons are not resistant to fire. And magma blocks are pretty much like a fire block. Nothing can spawn on top of these naturally unless they're also resistant to fire. Stuff like magma cubes, pigmen can spawn on top of them. Uh, with their skeletons and gas, but these guys won't enter men, the skeletons won't. So if we fill this whole thing up with magma cubes, we shouldn't get a single one of these uh, spawns after they are dead. So let's go ahead and fill this back in with magma blocks. And then we'll also kill off all the gas so we can see as soon as these guys all die. Okay, Enderman died. You can see the gas can still spawn because their resistance uh, to fire allows them to spawn top of magma cubes. So this way we can actually make a gas only farm. Where typically it'd be hard to make a gas only farm because gas are so large. Um, normally the way you restrict mobs from spawning is by using their height. But in this case we can actually make a gas farm on this. I think this is going to be a really cool idea and I look forward to turning this into a full-fledged gas farm. So our next option is to how we kill them. Uh, we could use wither roses to kill them where they stand. We obviously need to put like a roof on it as well as sides so they can't escape. But the problem is you kill them with wither roses, their loot's going to end up on top of this. And then we'll have to uh, deal with that loot by trying to, have to, um, trying to have to collect it somehow. So we need like hopper minecarts underneath to pick up all the loot. I don't know if we really want that many hopper minecarts. Uh, hop minecarts have a tendency of getting loaded and stopping. So I think it'd be better to make a fly machine to sweep all the gas to a single location and then kill them. And that way we don't have to like search this entire area for their loots. I think that'd be the easiest. So let's first put a roof on top of this. The gas are four meters tall, I believe. So we'll just put it four meters above and then we'll put some walls in it as well. So we got the roof in. The gas don't seem to move when there's a roof on top of them. They stand perfectly still. That will make it considerably easier. Uh, we also got our fly machine. We made it out of honey blocks, so nothing can spawn on top of this. But slabs here, nothing can spawn on that. Uh, we also got very close to the top, so nothing can spawn on any of these pieces when it moves back and forth. And we slab the top of it as well. Start that up. So it's going to go down and sweep all the gas to the end. Currently, we just have it going down and back. So that way, it will put all the mobs into one area rather than having two collection areas. We also put a little ledge here. So the machine should be able to get over this little edge here, but the gas don't. And the gas should be able to clip completely through them and then return, be able to pull the gas with them. There you see it pulling them. And then we gotta have a killing area over here. And we're thinking about trying to use wither roses. So we want their loots to end up on the slabs. And currently we really don't got anything to stop them from escaping on this side, but hopefully they'll be like bump up against this um, block here and then they can take some damage. And we're hoping that's how we can kill them. So we're going to add some more to it, see if we can get this to work. So we got the rail system in, the hopper minecarts come over here and drop out their loot. And then they go down this rails and pick up all the items that land from their death. Uh, we also move the trapdoors a little bit more 
so it gives room for both set of gas. Since the light machine is a little bit, it's not completely straight across, there's a little bit nook in it because of the two segments. Uh, some gas don't quite end up in the same spot as others, so by moving this out, we can make sure that all of them end up on top of the wither rows. So when they come to the end here, you can see how those gas are a little bit out more than these. That's just because of the flying machine. But yeah, it works really good. The flying machine comes in, drops them off, and then we also set up so we can, um, oh, extra is adding some other stuff. But normally, yeah, it automatically goes back to their direction. So that looks really good. All loot's here. And then we can turn on the hopper mine carts and pick them up. Um, it's possible we don't even need this hopper mine cart on this side. I don't see any items landing here. So we're going to continue adding in a couple more pieces. I think next up is just making sure items get picked up and then continuing this to the rest of the, the end there. So I moved the gas farm from our testing area up in the air where it's easier to get mob spawns because we're not so close to other spawning places which are below the bedrock. And we have it moved to its final resting spot, which is here just above the bedrock. This way you can AFK quite high and prevent other mobs that are underneath of the bedrock from being able to spawn whatsoever. This also allows mobs spawning to be a little bit better because the higher you go up in the world, the slower it is for mobs to spawn into those chunks. So having this farm as close to the bombing world would be ideal, but for simplicity and easy to build, putting it right top of the bedrock is quite easy to do. And you don't have to worry about doing any slabbing or putting buttons down here to prevent other mobs from spawning. And that's because the player is actually AFKing quite high. So if I go here in the center and just go straight up, you can see everything kind of goes out of focus. But this is at your AFK point way up here. This is at Y level 252, so very close to the build limit. And by standing up here, you only have mobs spawning in the kind of sphere shape that you see those armor stands. And that's logical geek boys. It's a fear data pack and very useful for testing out mob farms. I'll put the link down below. There's also a bunch of other really cool tools on it. And essentially this sphere will show where mobs are able to spawn if you're AFKing at that little glass piece up there. So anywhere you see these armor stands, that's somewhere where a mob could spawn if it's on top of a valid block. So you can see how as we go lower, it makes kind of a big sphere and the mobs are able to spawn inside of the sphere. So notice how the farm is all inside of the area where the armor stands are kind of encirculating. Yet, if we go just outside the armor stands, you can see we have other spawning spaces. But since they're outside of the sphere, we won't have any mobs spawning here when we're AFKing at the very top. This way we can concentrate all the mobs spawning in the game into this very small area so we can get extremely large amounts of gas spawning. Look at the gas we got here just from going up and down. That is quite amazing. Now in this version of Snapshot, there is a bug where these trees grow on top of the bedrock. So just make sure those aren't within the area where the mobs can spawn. And by putting it down here, it's also quite easy to build because when you're putting in this magma blocks, it's just right here at your head level when you're placing them in. Now to get the materials to build this, it's actually not too difficult. Mega blocks are very abundant at lower levels inside of the nether dimension. And they come in quite large pockets so you can get large amounts of them very easy even with a low level pickaxe. And the rest of the build you can make out of whatever cheap materials you have like cobble, stone. We just choose to use a new type of warp slabs look kind of pretty. They're also fire resistant. But they're not like blast resistant so if this gas shoot they can actually destroy them. So maybe you want to go with something like cobble. That way, if gas are spawning here while you're working on it, they don't create too much damage. There's a minimal amount of redstone. Like I said, we just got a couple of little circuits here to return the fly machines. And on the other side, the fly machines themselves have a little bit of redstone attached to them. But also, there's a little circuit here to stop the fly machine and send it back the other direction. And we also have a little bit of redstone here just to turn it on and off. Pretty simple. And there is a collection system. This would also have an on and off switch so we can turn them on and off. It is possible for minecarts to kind of get unloaded while they're moving and just stop. So it's really nice to have on and off switch. We also got some item sorters here, which will take in all the items and put them into these item filters. And that way we can sort out gas tiers as well as gunpowder. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So the on switch is right here. Just flick that and then it will take off. Both fly machines are synchronized and no gas are able to escape between them. So because the gas are four meters apart, we can actually put a three meter gap between these two fly machines and it's still able to capture them all. We also have a three meter gap between the edge and here. And this is loud so gas can actually spawn here and this block won't interfere with our spawning, but no gas are able to spawn here or here. So we just didn't put any blocks in whatsoever. 
but also a gap between the fly machine and this wall is small enough so that gas can't escape. So we're able to kind of stretch out a wider area than normal and collect the gas. We also have the same thing on this. You can actually make this any width you want. So if you want to collect more gas, you can make it much longer. Here comes the fly machines. It's gonna drop the gas off here. You can kind of see the other device here, which will turn the fly machine around and send it back again. The gas die very quickly on the wither roses. All their loots are dropped. They're being picked up by these hopper minecarts that go underneath, going back and forth, coming in and collecting all the loots. And even the loot that lands in the magma block or here or even on the wither roses, it all gets collected because the minecarts are able to reach up a whole block and pick up any items above that. We also have those trap doors here so the gas can't completely get pushed out and escape the entire farm. And we put in another couple rows of magma blocks here just because gas can actually spawn here because they just need one block and a half a block on each of their sides to be able to spawn here. That way we can get a little more spawns but these gas, once they spawn in, they will, will die from the wither roses. Here comes another batch. Very nice. So we're killing all the gas and we're not even AFKing in the proper spot. If you AFK up there, you're going to get a ton of gas down here like we've seen before. When it comes to powering the rails, I just use some levers along the edges. I also put some levers on top of the magma blocks to power the rails underneath since it's not very easy to get to them with bedrock underneath of that. Now the fly machines themselves are sweepers with honey blocks. Like I said before, we use honey blocks so mobs can't spawn on the actual block. Since honey block is slightly lower down than a full block, it's not possible for mobs to actually spawn on it. You kind of see that I go up and down between the two of these. So that way we can prevent having to slab this entire top. We can do these little streaks. That minimizes the amount of blocks you have to actually put down. So it makes it a little bit cheaper to build this farm up. Uh, we do have to be wary about stuff like pistons as well as observers here, which could have the possibility of mobs spawning on top of them. So to prevent that, we just slab the top. And you'd also want to slab this part here because notice how the fly machine comes all the way over here. And that way nothing will spawn on top of them. I'll do that to the same as over here. And we want to make a gassed only farm. So we want to prevent all those spawns. Now at the very far end here, there is one spot where stuff could potentially spawn, which is on top of the soul sand. They now change it so mobs can once again spawn on top of soul sand. So stuff like endermen or skeletons could spawn on top of this. But it would be extremely rare since we don't have very many spawning spaces. And if they did, they would die from the wither effect. It is possible to avoid that just by having our trap door like over kind of on top of this, I guess, and opened up. That way the gas could take damage while still preventing mobs from spawning on top of it. But we didn't want the gas to kind of get stuck into the fly machines, which they were doing if we didn't give them this little extra room. It's pretty cool to watch the fly machines uh, reverse. Extra helps with this build as well as a lot of other people. So big thanks to everyone who came on our snapshot stream and joined us during this testing. It was a lot of fun. And you can see the little mechanism that we put in here, which will detect this observer coming through and then it will pulse this piston downwards preventing the fly machine from actually going beyond the piston. And then we have a second piston which comes down and updates the observer. And even though the fly machines don't completely synchronize over time, gas don't really move around. So even if it's on the edge here, it will continue to be there. It won't be like able to keep zigzagging around this little hole here. So now you kind of understand how the farm works. Let's go ahead and see what kind of rates we get out of it. Let's clean out all our previous testing and let's go and AFK up at the top. So it's been 10 minutes. I want to see how well it performed. Wow, there's a lot of gas down here. Holy moly, <laughs> that is crazy. That's one thing, if this thing produces a lot of gas, they can't all fit here on the edge to die. But you can see the majority of them get pushed in. Some of them might not be able to get over. They'll get pushed over there the next pass though. But dang, that thing is very, very powerful. Let's go ahead and check out the loot. Wow, just in 10 minutes? That's really good. Dang, that's over 600 gas tier per hour and around 1,200 gunpowder per hour. And if you want to, you can make the farm with a killing chamber of both sides to make it a little faster, or you can make it more narrow so the fly machines don't have to go as far. You can also make it longer if you want to increase spawns. So there's a lot you can do if you want to have faster rates. I gotta say, you probably don't even need to make it much bigger than this unless you just wanna really have fun 
making it quite large. If you do make it larger, you do have to pay attention to that little circle that we showed earlier and making sure that the entire farm is inside of it and making sure that there is no other spawning spaces underneath that are still being exposed. And with this farm alone, we were able to get the gas tier as well as gunpowder automatically, especially the gas tier because that is unique to gas. So let's go into our spreadsheet here. We're keeping track of all the different items in the game of Minecraft and seeing which ones we can actually farm up. And this document is a work in progress. So you might see some incorrect information on it. That's why we're going through and doing these one at a time. So we can go ahead and I'll put the video link right here showing that it has been completed. We also have three categories. We've got renewable, yes. Gas tiers are renewable. Is it automatic with a inactive player? Yes, because we need a player to sit there to make mobs spawn. And is it infinitely automatic? Meaning that it can continue on without needing any new input from the player. And yes, it is because the player can sit there as long as he wants, continue to make more gas spawn. So those are all correct. Yes, yes, yes. And then once we get this built up on the Protect SMP server, we can go ahead and check this check mark here as well. I also added a new category here just to show if it's been uh, completed. And that way we can see our progress. Overall, like I said, this is a very successful gas only farm and it produces a ton of loot as well. So challenge completed. We did it guys. We made a gas only farm in the game of Minecraft. Stay tuned to see what other challenges we take on in the game of Minecraft as we attempt to farm up every single item in the game of Minecraft. And if you guys would like to build this up in your very own worlds, I will provide the world download so you can see exactly block for block how to build this up. And as always, it's always a real appreciation if you drop a like as well as share this with other Minecrafters so they can learn that it's actually possible to farm up guests only, especially your favorite YouTubers who enjoy building these type of farms. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye